So right now we're just talking about the tools. We have it all here. This is a five in one. One of the most handy tools you can have. If you don't have them, just make sure you have one. Um, they can be dangerous. They can be sharp when you first get them uh, on these two edges right here. Caulk gun which is used for the epoxy. Some of you asked, you know, what, what's the name of that anchoring epoxy for pinning? Um, it's Sika that makes it, and it's just called anchoring adhesive, and it is an epoxy. And the reason that I brought this is because it is readily available. It is at Home Depots and Lowe's and Menards. We had talked about uh, a setting compound. It's kind of like a plumber's putty. This is it right here. It is dense, heavy stuff. It, it's surprising. You're like, oh, I'll just pick up that little bucket. <laughs> no, I won't. And then uh, these are some setting blocks that we will use in conjunction with uh, the setting compound. Over here, we have the injection grout material that we can also use as a breathable adhesive, okay? It can fill voids, it can be used to adhere a couple pieces together in situations where you're not going to pin. It's a great alternative to pinning. Back here, this big bucket, this is that marble patching material. It can also be used on travertine. You don't do a lot of travertine type work, but it is marble patching material. It's called 15MT. See, it says Heritage Restoration Mortar. This is from the U.S. Heritage Group up in Chicago. It's actually blended by a company called Constec in Canada. This is an RV water filter. So you just put your hose on that end and you can put another hose on this end or just spray right out of this. Um, just run it for maybe a minute at the very beginning because the first flush, you're gonna see carbon flying out of it. And I always, you can buy them in two packs but they don't come with this little attachment, which this is great if you're attaching to a hose bib or something. Um, and then you can screw this straight into that and then you can run your hose from there out. You don't have to have this on the end and it just gives it some flexibility. And you'll know it's done because the flow will really be reduced um, at some point. And it comes with a little cap to plug up each end. So if you wanna take it off and store it, you can do that as well. Uh, because carbon is activated by oxygen, so it comes sealed. And the minute that the carbon is exposed to oxygen, it actually starts depleting. So that's why they say three months. So once you open it, it's spinning itself. This grinder is currently set up, and a lot of people don't know that they have these, and feel free to pass it around. That has a diamond wheel. Diamond wheels a lot of times are used in cutting concrete or masonry, things like that. Most people don't know that you can buy them for cutting metal, and that's designed for metal. It's about a $35 wheel. Um, it will last a long time. The reason that's here is because we will be cutting some stainless steel threaded rod today, and we'll show you how that works and how to do that safely. And the reason I have a cordless saw, cordless tools have come a long way, a long way. This is a 20 volt, lasts a long time. I don't think I've charged it since I bought it. I charged it full and I've used it a lot. They're great to have in the field because you'll use lumber for you're patching because um, you'll actually clamp that's why these clamps are here you'll clamp a board to the front and back on two different sides and you may just come out with some two by fours and you need to cut them in length you don't know exactly how tall your stone is at the time so you just come out with eight footers make sure you have a circular saw and if you have cordless tools it's a lot handier than having to haul a generator around the flex tool you'll see has a great long cord has a hose connection here this is a quick connect fitting connects there we put a bubble level on just a little bit ago and look, that epoxy's set up, it's done. So this is a flat surface we found that's an exact 90 degree angle to the tip. So uh, you just use that bubble level. If you have your stone nice and level set, you can work in the field right at the stone and do your drilling right there without having to move it. This is a short uh, diamond bit that has seen some use. This would work for most applications where you just have maybe a three inch long pin this bit is about $90. Uh, this tool is about $500. Scary working with water with it, but I mentioned it has a GFI along with it. That helps to keep you out of trouble. And everything is sealed, epoxy coated on the interior. I mean, this has seen some heavy use and gotten very wet and it's, it's lasted. This is a Bulldog, a Bosch Bulldog. It does take some special bits. They're called SDS Plus bits. It's not a typical drill where you just clamp down the chuck. You just pull it back and you pop your bit in and you go. It has three settings on it. One is for hammering because it is a hammer drill. We never use that function on headstones. That's for drilling into concrete to do some doweling or you can buy chisels for it for light demo work, which is really neat. Um, that's where you would use that function or the, you flip it, or you can use it as a hammer drill. 
where it's spinning and hammering, or you can use it as drill only, and that's the function that you could use. Now, you operate it very slowly, and if you can, do it safely, have a little water bottle and just mist right at the tip just to kind of keep it cool while you're working it. And if you have someone with you, it's even better for them to do it so you can keep both hands on the tool. But it, it just helps to prevent that thermal shock we were talking about to the stone, especially on a real sensitive stone. Okay, and we have a couple tarps. The reason we have plastic tarps here, as well as the canvas tarps, these are for setting headstones on. This is for setting dirt on. We don't want to just go in and just start digging and throwing dirt everywhere. We want to lay it on a tarp so that we can keep our site neat and protect the grass and put it right back in place. So just something as simple as some, some heavy plastic tarps will help with that. And then the canvas ones, like I mentioned, uh, are for laying the headstone on. We also have, and we'll be using it today, there's a tripod set up up here. These are uh, slings, lifting slings. This is a six foot lifting sling. So for a smaller or medium sized stone, you just wrap it around once, you put it through itself. It just has a loop on each end put it through itself and then straight up to the chain hoist and you just start lifting. And then you just swing it over to a work table or over to the ground. This has a 6,400 pound vertical lifting capacity. So it could even handle a stone and me at once. We also have a mirror up here. We kind of talked about using mirrors to highlight lettering. You'll see this reflection right here, but it, it makes a difference and you'll actually be shining it across a stone to see if you can capture more of a shadow across the stone. So we'll use mirrors for that. We have some large clamps for the patching and repair work we're going to be doing. We have post levels. If you don't have one, then you're gonna use these every day in your cemetery. You just attach it to the corner of your stone and it gives you different levels at once. You can see this side, whether it's level, you can see this side at once, whether it's level. We have quite a few extra shovels over here. So has anyone ever bought cobalt uh, hand tools or anything? You know anything that's really cool about them? And what do you think you break a lot in cemeteries? Handles. Handles, <laughs> leverage. Man, uh, yeah, buy one of these and you'll never buy another. I mean, it's that, it's that simple. All right, well, that's it for kind of the overall tool review. I also have a compressor that's for blowing out joints after we drill or after we do some, some cleaning or chiseling. Uh, that's just for cleanup and that's basically it.